I'm walking into the South Carolina Aquarium Sea Turtle Hospital, the only facility of its kind in the state of South Carolina designed to treat injured and diseased sea turtles. Now, Kelly Thorvalson is the director of the Sea Turtle Rescue Program. Thanks for joining us today, Kelly. What, uh, what have we got here? Well, this is a juvenile green sea turtle that came to us uh, last year. It was uh, April of 2010. She was floating and was covered in marine growth, and so, you know, we did a lot of diagnostic tests to figure out what was wrong with her. Well, she looks, uh, she looks pretty good right now. She looks very good. She was actually just cleared for release last night. Really? Yes. We have some uh, romaine here. If you, you're welcome to. Can, do you mind? Absolutely. Can I? Just uh, tear off a, a piece and, and give it to her. She'll try some from the surface. All right. So just dangling in the water here. Sure. You can. It will float actually, but uh, okay. if you get her attention, she'll. There we go. You know what? Just drop it on and see what she does. She's. Uh, hmm. Maybe she's I don't been. Know how much she's, uh, how hungry she is. Here, drop Maybe the, it's me. Drop is the it, whole is it thing the in the bottom. Drop the whole thing into the water, and it'll sink to the bottom, and it'll allow her to forage uh -huh. on the bottom. So it's human waste and human impact one of the primary causes that sea turtles come to this hospital. Well, it certainly is a, a big cause. You know, on any of the sea turtles that come in, you'll see human impacts, and and some are. Um, debilitated from unknown causes. But as you walk through the hospital, you'll see human impacts on many of these animals. Well, let's take a look. I'm uh, curious to see that. So who is this? This is McClellan. She is an adult big. She's female big. loggerhead. Yes, 230 pounds. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's a little lighter because she's she's missing her front flipper, uh, the front right flipper. She's about, so about 100 kilograms. Uh, yes. And uh, she is remarkable. She was she was found right behind Cape Island. I believe you were on Cape Island mm -hmm. earlier today or, or viewing Cape Island. And she was entangled in a crab trap rope right around that front right flipper. It was so another human impact. Another human impact. And so she, will she be released soon? We will. And uh, we will pull her out today and just uh, do a quick look over those wounds and, and see how they feel. We'll pull her out of the water. We are. All yes. right. So would you like to help? Can I help? Excellent. I'm ready. Get ready to get wet. Get re I'm ready to get wet. <laughs> no problem. Again, uh, the, the, the crab trap rope had um, basically cut all the way down to the bone. Uh, that flipper actually came off or self-amputated in the boat. And she's just been healing ever since. And, and you know, these animals are uh, remarkable in their capacity to heal. And we're just thrilled that she's able to get out the very season that she came to us. Now, this isn't just a problem here, though, in South Carolina. Uh, you know, six of the seven species of sea turtles are either threatened or endangered. Mm -hmm. And sea turtles are found all over the world. Right. So, to me, this is really a, a, a warning call, not just for the residents of southern United States, mm -hmm. but for people all over the world, because these kinds of impacts are affecting sea turtles everywhere. Right. So, as an indicator of the health of, of the oceans, what does that tell us? Well, it tells us we all have to work together to save sea turtles. You know, uh, many sea turtle species uh, will migrate from one ocean basin to another, and, and when we share uh, sea turtle migra migratory path, uh, we we all have to protect that animal. All right, I might get my sleeves a little wet here. See how she stays calm there? Uh -huh. There we go. All right. It's done yes. amazing work with her. So yes. what's next? You'll so, take her out to the to the ocean? We will. I have to make a few phone calls uh, to the folks at the beach, to the South Carolina DNR, and um, and if everyone gives the okay, then we'll take her out hopefully on Friday and, and let her back in the ocean. That would be great. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Not every day that you sit in a car with a endangered uh, Kemp's Ridley sea turtle on your lap. <laughs> All right. This is the big moment. We're here. We're uh, getting the turtles ready. 
before release. And uh, going to show them off to the throngs that have gathered for this wonderful occasion. And then let them in the water. Let's lift the whole thing out. It might oh, be easier to pick him up from down here. Okay. There we go. Back up, back up, back up. You see where he healed from his injury? Bye, Bob. <laughs> Say goodbye. All right, bye. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, good luck, little guys. <laughs> he, he's a little tentative. This is a perfect example of how people can work in harmony with nature to build a sustainable future. I'm Philippe Cousteau. Thanks so much for joining us on this episode of Going Green, Your Green World. He's just checking it all. He's like, wait a second. Yeah, hell. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah.